You may have heard the saying, if it can't be grown, it has to be mined. Now more than ever, we rely on materials that can't be grown to build our computers, phones and cars. This is why Cornwall is once again one of the world's most important mining regions. When lithium was first discovered here in 1864, there was no commercial demand for it. A century and a half later, lithium is at the heart of the technology that powers our world. We need it for the batteries in our phones, laptops and electric vehicles, and it's a vital part of our plans for a cleaner, greener future. Today, Cornwall boasts an active mining and mining services sector, with over 100 businesses exporting globally. They're building an environmentally responsible industry, which is at the forefront of the UK's clean growth revolution. Let's head underground to meet some of them and drill into the details. We met with Lucy Crane, who's a senior geologist at Cornish Lithium, an innovative mineral exploration company who focus on sustainable extraction of lithium and other battery metals. Cornwall itself is actually underlain by a load of granite rock. In some places it's got mudstone on the surface, but actually this big mass of granite that sits underneath Cornwall runs from Dartmoor in the east all the way out to Land's End and the Isles of Scilly in the west. And where it pokes out at the surface, we see it in places such as Dartmoor or St Austell or Cambrai, but actually it's all joined up at depth in one big mass of granite. And this is important for all of the mineralisation that you have down here. So the granite is important for lithium because it's actually enriched in lithium minerals, but it's also hot as well. So if you're looking for warm water that has lithium in it, then Cornwall's one of the best places you can look in Europe and probably the world. How have you been using historical archives to inform your operations? There's over 3,000 named mines in the county. And actually, for the last few hundred years, there've been really detailed records kept as to what's going on under the subsurface. And that information is really valuable to us. We can then combine that with satellite imagery, mapping by our own geologists. We've been flying drones to build 3D digital models of the North Cliffs of Cornwall. And we can bring all of that information together in one big 3D model that then allows us to more efficiently target where we want to actually do on the ground exploration. So if you can target your exploration much more efficiently, it lowers your impact right at the start of this mining cycle. Why is it so important to establish a centre for lithium extraction and production in the UK? There's a whole massive supply chain that involves transporting materials all across the world at the moment, and they're very heavily reliant on China for battery technology. We've got really great geology here in Cornwall that means we could feasibly produce a significant amount of that lithium at home in an environmentally responsible manner and we can keep that vertically integrated supply chain to produce batteries and electric cars within the UK without having to ship materials all around the world. It really feels like we're on the cusp of something at the moment in Cornwall. There's all of these projects, there's all of this new technology. It means all of the stars are kind of aligning for the industry to kickstart again. We just need that final push to get there. Global demand for lithium and other strategic metals is rapidly outstripping supply. Sustainability goals such as the UK government's policy to ban new petrol and diesel cars by 2035 have resulted in a race to discover new sources and establish new processing centres in the UK. Cornwall is in pole position thanks to its rich, unexploited deposits of high-grade lithium, tin, copper and tungsten. Owen Mylop, the Chief Operating Officer of Cornish Metals, took us on a guided tour of South Crofty Mine in Camborne and gave insight into the exciting future of this historic tin asset. Cornish Metals acquired South Crofty back in 2016 and since that time we've been concentrating on trying to raise the capital to dewater South Crofty and bring it back into production. It's about 120 metres below the surface, which is the deepest we can go at the moment. But the mine itself goes down about 800 metres below, but most of it's flooded. How do you ensure the operations are environmentally sustainable? So the average grade that we will be mining in future is around 1.5% tin. That doesn't sound very much, but most tin mines in the world have less than half a percent of tin. We have to mine a lot less rock to produce the same amount of tin. 
Also, because South Crofty is a brownfield site, we are able to backfill all the voids that were mined previously. Being an underground mine, the only thing we have on the surface are the head frames of the shafts and the building in which we do our processing. Everything else is underground, out of sight. Whereas a lot of tin mining in the developed world is mined on the surface and people cut down rainforest to enable them to recover the tin there. When it comes to tin deposits, Cornwall really is a world-class uh, province for tin. There's a wealth of mining expertise here, stretching back 4,000 years, and the Camborne School of Mines has been supplying graduates to every mining location in the world since the 1800s. Robert Pell, founder of Minviro, is a consultancy that uses life cycle assessments to help reduce the environmental impacts in mining projects. We connected with Robert over a video call. Could you give us an introduction to Minviro? Minviro is a uh, consultancy and te technology company which uh, provides life cycle assessments for the mining and metal sector. So what that means is we were able to, to quantify and mitigate environmental impacts during the development stage or operation of technology metal projects. What makes the Camborne School of Mines such an asset to Cornwall? In almost every single mine, you'll find some connection to Camborne School of Mines. Something that I think is uh, sort of underappreciated is the, the research and the forward-looking nature of Camborne School of Mines, especially in the areas of you know, in, environmental and social sustainability, and understanding that sustainability is a core aspect of, of the raw materials and mining space. Do you have any predictions for the future of Cornish mining? Demand growth for a lot of these technology metals, which can be found in Cornwall, means that there's a really positive uh, outlook. I think there's a real opportunity to highlight best practice, incorporating this life cycle assessment into the design phase and understanding exactly where the impacts of projects lie and, and how we can mitigate this and being really transparent. So even the consumers of, say, the electric vehicles know exactly where their product comes from and what the impact of that product is. With over 40 years of practical mining and minerals processing, Jeff Harrison is now the community consultant at Cornwall Resources. We spoke with Jeff about the future of mining in Cornwall. Cornwall Resources is an exploration company we've been exploring for tin, copper and tungsten in East Cornwall around the Callington area. Cornwall is probably one of the most mined areas of the world from the surface, but it's probably the least explored with exploration drilling, diamond drilling at depth. So the old timers went down two, three, four hundred metres, but there's a lot more lower down to be found and it just needs people to spend the money, explore and get those mines started again. How does the local community feel about mining returning to Cornwall? Generally when we go around and explain what we're trying to do, there's a good response. They'll always have a great uncle or a granddad or some family member who has worked in the mining industry. And it goes back to also people want jobs. Most people, they want to be able to own their own house and have the well-paid jobs that they can see for the long term. Do you have any predictions for the future of mining in Cornwall? Mines are being worked out all over the world all the time and you need those new mines to come along to replace them. I think we're, we're at the, the cusp of a very important time here in Cornwall and I'm, I'm very optimistic for the future. Today, Cornwall's mining industry represents a union of legacy and innovation where new exploration technology is being applied to tap into vast resources. There's world-class infrastructure and expertise wherever you look. And with the global demand for strategic metals only moving in one direction, it's clear that Cornwall's mining and mining services sector is about to boom. These businesses are mining for the future, a future of economic prosperity and positive environmental impact. It's a future that many more businesses will want to be a part of. <laughs>